Welcome to this print and delivery e-learning video on getting started. This is the second video. If you haven't seen the introduction, you might want to do that first. But in this session, we're going to go into the system, set it up from nothing and see what you get out of the box. So here we are in a sub business one system. And uh, prior to this uh, and in order for you to follow this, you need to first have installed B1 usability package because print and delivery is a sub module of that product. So you can't run it without the product. We have separate e-learnings on how to install usability package, but we assume in this video that you already have. And once you have done that, we can go into the configuration either by the configuration here or go through the wizards in the system. We will just take the, the main configuration here. As you can see I've not taken uh, any of the modules for B1 up in this case because we are all about the print and delivery in this case. But of course they can work side by side. So over on the productivity package is the B1 print and delivery. You can see I've turned it on here but uh, in a system, it would normally not be turned on. Uh, because you need to do two things. One is to activate it here. That will create all the metadata, the user-defined fields and tables. And in your case, it would uh, request you to restart the system. But in my case, I've already made them, so you don't need to sit, uh, see, see me uh, waiting for my metadata to create. The second part is that Print and delivery is an additional purchase to usability package. Uh, and you can buy them in less uh, quantity than the main product's license count. So for that reason, it doesn't auto-assign a license. If you don't even have a license, it will say, instead say activate demo here. Uh, or you could go to our website and request a demo. But if you haven't, uh, then you can assign the license uh, here if you already have the license. So that depends on what license you have by now. But I need to assign my license because else I can't see print and delivery because it might be some of my colleagues who use the license instead. But I will activate and right now it will just pop up this screen which is the wizard. Uh, but before I can see the full features I need to say update that I have actually done this. So. The wizard is here. If you by mistake close it, you can go to administration, add-ons, B1 usability package, module configuration, print and delivery, and down here we have the wizard so you can get back to it. And in the wizard it will show you the 42 different out-of-the-box scenarios we have in the system. There's everything from sales orders, purchase orders, finance, opportunities, and so on, and a bit more advanced things like account balance and Dunning Wizard, all of which we will get to in separate videos in this uh, e-learning series. You could just go in if you want to and say, I want everything, select all, and get all the checkboxes. That's perfectly fine. Or you can go in and say, I only want it for these things because this is the things I use. Um, the only other two things you need to really take care of is to say where do you want to store the crystal report files uh, that print and delivery uses. In my case it's a, a fixed folder on my, my hard drive but in a real life scenario you will probably use a backslash backslash uh, server name and so on in order to uh, to have them for every user to see in the same place. But for demo purpose, we, we go with this. And the second thing we need to do is we need to set the database information. You don't need to go in here. It will warn you when you press OK if you haven't. I already set them up, so uh, I don't have that problem right now. But let me choose the various things I want in my system. Let's say it's these. And again, in a demo system, you probably just select all and then uh, go from there. 
And once you're content with what you've chosen, you simply say OK and save the wizard. And it will do a lot of things behind the scenes, set up a lot of building blocks uh, that we have in the system, uh, and then uh, everything will be up and running. If you want to go back to the wizard again, you can of course go by the, the talk wizard, and you can now see that what is active, and you can go in and activate more things. If you want to get rid of them, you need to actually delete the various building blocks uh, in there. Uh, the building blocks will be shown in the next session. But what did we get out of this? Well, uh, for example, we activated sales order. So let's go to the sales order screen. And let's get rid of the sidebar and just see the last document. And in here, uh, we can just work with render literary either from the right click, which is here. Where you can see there's a default sales order that can print, preview, email, and PDF by default. That's the out of the box. Uh, or we can just press the buttons up here. So if I want to see the preview, I get the preview screen with an out of the box system. In my case, the system is set to Spanish, but we can quickly switch over to, for example, English, uh, which is one of the the things we can do in this system that we can actually change around the language and the crystal reports follow along. We can also press the email button and once the system have uh, done this, my email will, in my case, out of the box, it goes to a draft folder in, in the system and we can go in and see exactly the same uh, PDF that we saw before. So that is essentially how we can do things. Again, we can see we set the service call to, to have it as well. So if we go to service call, browse back to one of the ones we have and press preview, we will see a version of the service call and so on. So for every single one of these, some of them are a bit more advanced. Again, there will be separate e-learning videos on them. So that is the ad hoc that was mentioned in the, in the introduction video. But we can also do things like mass, uh, mass delivery of things. So we can, for example, go in and say we want to have all the invoices. And we could, as an example, just see what uh, invoices there were to send now. There's several thousand, so uh, we don't really want to send all of them. So we might want to set up some uh, to and from our specific day and so on. Uh, more on, on that uh, in configurations. But let's just say we want to send these three uh, invoices and we want to send them as an action email. So if we press OK, it will now run through all three. And again, in my Outlook folder, I now have three more documents, or uh, two more emails uh, ready to send, uh, which is the three invoices uh, we just talked about. And finally, from the introduction, we could go in and say, OK, we want to actually just automate all of this uh, in the system. We could go to the schedules not be any schedules out of the box, but we could make one. Choose the invoices. Set the schedule to say every five minutes we should send all the unsent invoices. And in our case, because we just introduced this only from today and forward. So if we do this, we need an email. that we could create a schedule we could see what data is for schedule because there's nothing here but if i make for example an invoice like this see if we have all the data no we missed the tax code like that to the system 
and our schedule will now have one unsent invoice. When five minutes is up, the server component, which the schedule requires, will pick it up, send it automatically. The user of the B1 client just need to care about creating the invoices in the correct manner, and the rest will just take care of everything. So that was a demo of how to get started. Simply go in and set up, uh, use the wizard, and uh, choose the things you want. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of building blocks, and that is what we're going to tackle in the next session. But for now, thank you for watching.